And then I started to think about the implications of, of artificial intelligence and how that how we could use artificial intelligence in the Google applications, the, the classic ones and the uh, the new ones. I'm going to skip over the Fig Jam, but Fig Jam, by the way, is a is a whiteboarding app. Google's recommending Fig Jam and others to take the place of Jamboard. Jamboard, if you haven't heard, is going to end its life this year in the in the fall. And it's been a pretty fun, exciting, but basic uh, whiteboarding tool, collaborative whiteboarding tool that's in Google Workspace. Well, Fig Jam is coming. It's one of the ones they recommend. And the nice thing about Fig Jam is it's um, it's really good for any age. And they have some AI built into it. Like you can you can use the AI in Fig Jam to write prompts or create to create really cool boards that your kids can work on or your students or your staff or whoever. OK, so what is artificial intelligence? Does anybody have uh, their own everyday definition? What is AI? Well, you can see what I said here that AI refers to computers, machines uh, being made to think and learn like like humans. But there are different levels or different kinds of AI, aren't there? Uh, we have we have everyday AI you might find in your Google Maps or Waze on your finding your way to work with Waze, and your AI there is helping to bring just the right data into focus. And Tracy says, AI has no empathy or ability to reflect. Wow, you went right there, didn't you? That's that's great. Yes. So as we, you know, as we have our concept of AI, we we also a lot of us have this sort of wariness, like uh, what do you do with the intelligence that's basically machine machine intelligence and how do we interact with that as humans but uh, one of the things that we can see in some of these tools that we're looking at in in the google workspace is that we we've had some ai tools that have been around for quite a while and while they're while they're improving and there are new generative ai tools where we can we can create things uh, there are existing tools that we'll, we'll try them out we'll see so uh, AI with Google, you know, I, I, I wanted to really make sure this was just a foundation uh, comment at the beginning. What are we talking about with Google and AI? Well, one of the products is Duet. Duet is similar to Microsoft Copilot. I mean, just kind of painting with broad, broad brush, but it's a set of tools that will work with Workspace. And so today we'll look at slides, sheets, and docs, and how Duet works in those uh, different applications, okay? And I have a free eight, eight hour demo. I mentioned that earlier, if you, if you came in late, it's in the resources and you're free to try that. It'll be open tomorrow between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Okay, so there's that. But we're also looking at uh, other AI products like Bard or Bard now is called Gemini. Uh, so how many of you have used uh, Bard or Gemini? Can I get a yes or no in the chat? Hello, Janet, welcome. Have you used Gemini, I mean, uh, Bard or Gemini? Okay, great. So we'll do, a, we'll do a little playing with Gemini today too. And I have other accounts uh, in that resource document that are uh, they do have, they're good until the 27th and they have barred access or Gemini. I mean, it's just less than a week ago, they changed it to Gemini. So I keep saying barred. And then you got Vertex. Now, uh, is anybody here in the IT space or, you know, you're in coding or architecture systems, all that? I'm not assuming that anybody is, um, but Ver Vertex is, is an enterprise product. For example, you know, a large school district like LA Unified or maybe take Laco, you know, if, if they wanted to invest in 
a custom AI. They could, they could go with Google Vertex and create an AI that worked just within our data. And so that would have, you know, the advantages of being secure and we could have control that, you know, we'd have certain assurances that the data that we're generating with that is staying safe, not, not risking that any of our confidential or private data is getting out there into the internet. Because isn't that one of the main issues that people are concerned about? You know, the security and the, the safety. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, good. And then this slide, I'm not going to go over everything, just describing the different aspects of these, these products that are coming out, these features that are part of uh, Workspace. They're, they're, they call Duet. So Duet would be like the umbrella, and then Help Me Write is in Docs, Help Me Visualize is in Slides, and Help Me Organize is in Sheets. I, I don't know about this helping you connect. I haven't really tried that, but you know, I, I did mention it, you know, there are some advanced AI features in Google Meet that uh, they enhance the video. Uh, they, they can, there's one that can track you to keep you in the center of the, of the screen. So there's a lot of these things that are happening in the background too. All right, so, all right. So let's try a little duet. And let's see if I have duet in my, in this account, I should see. And here's how I find out. I go to docs.new, and if, if I have uh, the license activated, I'll see that little symbol, there it is. Do you see my screen? It says, help me write. Help me write, yeah? So I thought it would be fun if we made, a, made up a story, okay? So I'm going to go on a separate document here. I'll make the I'll make it a um, just a blank document. Um, I'm only seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, let me switch it over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good catch. Let me see. Let me see. YouTube. One of the things that I forget when I'm using Meet is it doesn't do the same thing. I mean, the screen sharing is a little bit different. So I really appreciate those heads up. I don't want to lose any minutes where I'm on a separate page. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so I'm going to uh, have us write a story together, but we're going to use uh, Google uh, Help Me Write in Docs. And let me see if I can share the right uh, screen. Let me just share the entire screen. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so dismiss this. Okay, so make this a little bit bigger. And so what I was doing was I was saying, okay, let's talk about where uh, this story, let's have this story happen in New York City. Okay, and let's have a story be about uh, some pets that are going to going on an adventure. What are some names of dogs? Go ahead and share them in the chat or tell me. Crypto. Crypto. Crypto, interesting name. Chuck. Chuck. I'm glad to say to Chucky and not Chuck. Chuck and not Chucky. Fido. Okay, let's do a couple more. Names of dogs. Rover. Rover. Okay. And no, Tracy. Uh, Laco doesn't have Duet uh, enabled. I've asked about it and they do google is offering some trials to companies and organizations but they're not interested in doing that right now and it's very limited buddy okay buddy okay so now let's do pigs what are some names of pet pigs wilbur <laughs> pork chop pork chop oh good okay pork chop a couple more Ham. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Oh, oh no. Okay. Okay. And then finally, what are some of the famous places they might visit in New York City? Central Park. Okay. The zoo.
Brooklyn Bridge. I notice nobody says um, Yankee Stadium. Ooh. <laughs> okay, well, we just wanted to keep those as notes. So I'm going to click Help Me Write, and I'm going to do the prompts. Uh, if I'd have been smart, I would have just copy and pasted. But I'm going to say, uh, write a story at a fourth grade level. Level about a uh, a dog and a pig who are friends and go on an adventure in New York City. Any other details uh, you think I should add? Oh, how about add mentioning? I need to prompt it to tell me the places, right? Include their names and some of the fun places they visit while there. Any other comments? OK, so what I need to do is I need to cut that, and I'm going to paste it into the Help Me Write box. Let's just see what I get. I'm just going to click Enter. And then it's going to do, I like the little animation. It goes, bleep, 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 bleep. all right, there it is. Let me make that bigger. I know it's tiny. Uh, once upon a time in the bustling city of New York, there lived an unlikely duo. A dog named Sparky and a pig named Petunia. Okay, well, we did predictions and we didn't predict exactly what duet did. That's okay. Let's see, this sunny day, they spark the exploration of the city. They go to Central Park. Okay, we got Central Park. Of course, that's probably the most famous place. And uh, yes, Janet, go ahead. Um, Mark, I probably joined a bit late. So where is the Help Me Write? Help Me Write is, that's that's fine if you, if you join late. I'm glad that we can bring that up again. So Help Me Write is a feature that Google is adding Companies or organizations need to subscribe to it. It's an extra license fee. And uh, and from what I've heard, it can be very expensive. For example, uh, Copilot, you know, it's a comparable product. Copilot is like $30 per user per month. In other words, it would cost Laco millions. It would, I, I haven't done the math, but it's a lot. So, uh, but you can try Duet with a personal account. I think there's still a sign up for that. And you can also, I have a demo account, it's in the resource document. And and you can try it out with that too. So the way you do it though, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll do some more examples and you'll see where you activate. It's, it's like a feature that's built into Google Workspace. Okay, so you saw that it found, I uh, hope I answered your question. The Spark and Petunia, we don't wanna get too much into the details. But I accepted its suggestion, and now I have that in the document. So I'm going to just skip ahead. We could do more with this with the text. For example, I could go. I could click on Help Me Write. Well, let's just do a little bit more with it. I'm going to say thank you. No, I'm not going to say thank you. I'm just going to say create four comprehension questions related to this to this um, story. Let's see what it does. You know, you could, uh, there they are. I'm just going to say thank you, insert, and being the excellent astute teacher that I am, I'm going to re review those and make sure they're OK, appropriate for my students. But I think we can already demonstrate that this pretty, this integration is pretty awesome. You don't have to go to a separate app, it's built in. But what about uh, illustrations? Let's take, let's take some of this text and let's put it in a prompt for the um, help me visualize. So that would be in, in slides. So I'm gonna go to slides.new and you'll see this feature here that comes up. Help me write is, I mean, uh, Google Slides is opening up. And you see there it is next to the record button. 
uh, have create image with duet. So I click on there and then it opens up the duet panel. So I'm gonna copy this text. And this is not a great description, but I, I think of this as like a shortcut. I didn't really write a very good duet, you know, create image prompt, but I just copied part of the story. I'm gonna give it a store uh, a style. Let's do it like a sketch and then create. I don't think this uh, text I I have listed what animals they are, so this is going to be crazy. <laughs> Whatever image I get here. Oh my goodness! No, it did. It does have a dog and a pig. You see that? That is cool. Which one should I use? Didn't didn't your list say dog names and pig names? Well, I was just saying in the in the prompt, I don't think I I don't think it had a, a dog or a pig. Oh, well, Sparky barked and Petunia oinked. So it must have picked up that that as a description. Okay, so to enter those pictures, I just click on it and it puts it into the slide. That's the integration. And you can see their limitations. It's it's not a great image of a dog. The dog's face is a little funny. But you know, you can play with it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that dog's face looks like it was painted in a junior high art project or some middle school art. It's supposed to say middle school nowadays. Huh? <clears throat> but it does kind of look like Central Park. Anyway, now that that picture is in the slide, I can copy it. And then I could put it into the, I could put it like as a header to the story. There's my story picture, picture story. Okay. Now what about um, slides? So let's look at slides.new. And uh, I wanna say, I'm sorry, I didn't have, I couldn't get the accounts active for you to try this like alongside me, but. I figured it might be fun just to just to see how it works. And then you can try it tomorrow if you want. Okay, so you see here, oh, I went to slides not new. I meant to go to sheets.new. So in sheets, it's called help me organize. And I've done some different um, trials with this, like I had it create a sample budget, a personal budget, a school budget, you know, just different things. But here it goes, it goes, oh, okay, get organized with Duet AI. There's a little prompt, I say, I got it. And then it should have this little prompt like icon. Where did it go? Okay. There it is right there at the top next to the, next to the magnifying glass search. So I was gonna make a list of books since this story was about a fourth grade, you know, animal story. Create a list of books for fourth grade about friendship and animals. Include, I'm going to give it a little bit more detail here. Include the, whoops, can't spell, the grade, the reading level, style level, and a author. And description. There we go. Enter. This is the kind of thing that would have saved me lots of time in the classroom. And I don't know about any of you, but now when I use these AI tools, I get mad because I think, wait a minute, how come they didn't have these when I was doing this all the time? Oh my gosh, I look back and there it is. So it should have. Uh, I should have an accept option here. I got to go to the bottom. There it is. Insert. You can, you know, you can do the other options here too. But I'm just going to insert that. Pretty nice. I got the friendship code. You see any good good books in here? There's the Giving Tree. The Giving Tree is not a Lexile Five. I don't know about that. But that wouldn't be surprised. But Charlotte's Web is like a three. Anyway, so whenever you use AI, even Duet, you should check it for accuracy because 
you know, it's been known to make things up. <clears throat> okay, any questions or, or comments before we move along? Because we wanted to cover some other things today. I wanted to introduce you all to Duet. It is it is coming. I mean, it's it's starting, to, it is a product that they're actually making available if people are willing to pay for it. And they did have a free trial for a while. So Simon, didn't you say that you had done the free trial? Not me, maybe Chip. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was, Phil. It was Philip. Yeah. Philip, you go by Philip or Phil? I go by Chip. I'm Chip. totally confusing you. <laughs> what? What are you? Okay, I got you. Anyway, uh, Phil or Chip or Philip, he said he had the, he signed up a while ago for the the free trial. Nowadays, uh, you can't do the personal account trial, but you can. If you have a Google Workspace account, like a paid account, which is something like ten dollars a month, then you can um, I sign up for a free trial of, of Duet. But you know, I'm not sure if you would really want to do that unless you were trying to test it. If you know, if you really wanted to learn this product, it might as well wait until it becomes a little bit more stable, right? All right. So there's a good look at Duet. Now let's go back to my slides so I can introduce. A couple other a couple other things here. I know we don't have unlimited time. It's almost four o'clock. All right. I do have a, I do have a slide deck in the resources with more detail about what we just did in Duet. If you want to, that'll be there. Okay. Let's talk about uh, some of these AI features that are in Google Meet. I mentioned this earlier, but um, going to I'm going to bring the uh, Google Meet over onto my other screen. So if you want your camera off, that now would be the time. But it's what it's going to do is it's going to create an infinity window here in our screen. It's going to make that. It's Google. Google's going to say, "Oh, you did, Mark, did you know what you just did? You just put the Google Meet in the screen that's being shared." But that's okay. So what I wanted to do is just show you, and you might want to try this. You click on the CC, and then it's automatically going to make the, the closed captions that are already being generated in the background available to you. And you can use the language that you know you prefer. It, it's, uh, there's a setting for that here. I click on English. And the language of the meeting is English, and then you can click on translated captions and then you can pick a language. And like I was saying earlier, there's a, a zillion of these languages. I'm gonna go with any suggestions for languages I should translate to. Let's try Turkish. Okay, so I close that. And now that I'm speaking in English, it's translating it into Turkish. And I, you know, those, those language translations are always being uh, adapted by artificial intelligence. But these are language models that Google has been working on for like at least 10 years in Google Translate. So they're pretty reliable. They've had, they've had a lot of testing and they continue to. But I'm going to turn off those captions because you know what? That takes up, it takes up some of my screen. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And there are other uh, built in AI features. So if I click on the settings right here, three dots, uh, you can see that you have the visual effects. And obviously, they have some pretty advanced built-ins. Now, you might not have all the features that I have, even if you're at the LACO account, because I have like a super version so I can try things out. But you have the basic backgrounds, but then you have these filters. And, and with the filters, you can turn those on. It does slow things down a bit, but uh, you know it can also lighten things up. Now, I, I'm still talking, but it looks like my image froze. So there I am. I am not a cat. That's nice, Philip. Meow, meow, meow. So my mouth isn't quite working exactly right. But they are using a facial recognition. That's nice, uh, Philip. You can have a... You can have a, a fine piratey day. 
So to turn those off, I go back to backgrounds and just I just did this. Oh, I click on this box up here and then just remove all. Oh, that's nice. Howdy, partner. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, so under appearance, you found it uh, there, Chip. And then they have frames. That that puts you though, even if I move, it'll it'll kind of recenter me into the image of this in the middle of the screen. So that's really kind of cool. And I like the little styles that they have too. This is something that I'm not sure you find in Zoom, but just just a way to kind of tweak the, the image. You know, if somebody spends a lot of time on meetings, this might be a way to freshen things up. Well, that's kind of cool. I like the black and white. So does it, Chip, does it look like you have the same options that I had in there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, good. So, you know, I, I could, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way so we can go back to my slide. They also have advanced noise cancellation. Now, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't tried that, but I imagine that that's a very helpful uh, accessibility feature because, you know, there are times where we're working and there are background noises where somebody in the cube will go down the way or something is on another call. Hi, Nayeli. Welcome. Glad you could make it. We're, can you hear me okay? Oh, she can put her headphones on. Okay, so I uh, just wanted to mention those features. I know there are many more, and one of them, like I had mentioned there, is transcriptions. And all those features are also available in Teams and Zoom. But Google Google's trans transcriptions, from what I've seen, are pretty accurate, pretty good. And also the translated, translated um, transcriptions. I'm not sure about how Zoom and Teams do with that. Okay, um, I created a bunch of different step-by-step -step guides to demonstrate some of the AI features that are built into the classic tools. So uh, one of them is Google Lens. Has anybody uh, played around with Google Lens? Yes. Anybody besides Chip? Okay. Uh, what about, um, well, we just did the duet. Okay, what about Google Maps? Have you used Google Maps? I'm sure you probably have, right? It's built into a lot of our navigation, right? Good. And uh, what about Google Translate? Have you used Google Translate? Yes, Google Translate. Okay, great. And Google Translate is, it seems like it's everywhere. Well, let's just do a quick look at Google Lens. And this is one that you might want to try in another tab if you feel so inclined. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a sign that's in another language. So I'm going to just going to do Japanese traffic signs. And I'm going to download that picture and then I'm going to bring it into Google Lens. So let's see here, road signs in Japan. Let's go there. Let's see here. Looks like I'm not getting the images. Interesting. That's that's Wikipedia. I haven't been there for a while. Road signs in Japan explain. Okay, so there we go. I want one with text on it. Oh, these are all these are all basic images. Okay, here's one with text. So I'm going to save that image. It's just going to go in my downloads folder. Okay. Now I'm going to go to images.google.com. Now Google Lens is is being worked into some of the different apps. So if you have an Android phone, it might be built into your your camera app. But if you're on a Google search, especially Google Images, images.google.com, you'll find it there. So I'm going to copy that just so it's referenced in the chat. And then I click on the little camera icon and upload the file. So there we go. Let's click it on there. Open that. That's the sign that I just downloaded. 
And you see here, I can search the internet for that image, which it's doing automatically. It's finding all those images. I can just click on translate and it should give me the translation. There it is, perpendicular parking. I would never have thought, I guess they, that we call that parallel parking in the US. No, that's the opposite of parallel parking. Well, anyway, interesting. So uh, that, you know, like I was saying, if you have a camera app, that's probably built into it now. But if you're on the web and you need to do image translation or search by image, you can do it with Google Lens. And that's definitely AI. It's machine language. It's not generative AI like we would find with Duet, but it certainly is AI. Any comments? Uh, you can use this for identification if you have a plant, something like that you want to you want to find out about. You can bring it into Google Lens and see if it'll tell you what kind of plant is this poison oak. What am I dealing with here? All right, we're doing great. Okay, one of the things I wanted to mention today before we finish up is. Uh, I would I would recommend that if you haven't to just spend some time with Google Bard, which is now called Gemini. And uh, there is also a uh, uh, an AI tool that Google is is making available called SGE Search Generative Experience. It's a little geeky. You, I, I created some steps if you want to try to turn that on, but it does. Uh, it does open up some search. It brings AI as like an assistant into your regular search. So I think I think they're eventually going to have the search generative experience like just as a part of the regular Google search for everybody. But I think right now they're just trying it out. And uh, you can just, they're letting you turn it on. You can turn it on in your search and you can turn it on in your browsing. I'm not going to really go into the demo of that, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Bard. So for those of you that want to try Bard and you don't have an account, uh, on the resource document down at the bottom, I have these accounts here. Here it is. I'll put this in the chat and I will show you how to do this, okay? Since I'm sharing my screen, it should work just fine. What you do is you take this email address. Here we go. I'm gonna start a new tab, and this will be on the recording too. A new tab, but it's gonna be incognito window. You can also do control shift in. And then I just go to google.com. You see, I used an incognito window. Uh, what that does is it limits the amount of cookies and um, the, all the different pieces of the browsing that it's saving. It's just simplifying my browser experience. So I am on, my, on Google, but now I'm going to say, uh oh, what account am I using? I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this one. I'm going to add another account. There we go. So I'm going to say use another account. And Instead of the number sign, use a number, a number between one and 30. So let me just go with 30 since this is probably the first time this account's been used. And the password is the same for everybody. These accounts, you know, they have some limitations, but they're meant to be just a demo of, of these features. You have a term of service. You click, I understand. Okay. So now I'm logged in with my new account, my demo account, and I'm gonna go to bard.google.com. And you see, it already tells me that it already changed it to Gemini. So if you wanna try out Bard, it's now Gemini. You can also try to log in with your account, you know, that you're already logged in with, but I don't know if everybody at LACO has it uh, enabled already. I think you can ask Help Desk if, if you would like to have it in, uh, turned on for your LACO account. 
or you could use you can use Bard for free with a personal account. All right, I said Bard, but I mean Gemini. There we go. You have a terms of service, first time. Always check the term of service, you know, really carefully, especially for something like generative AI. Know how it's using your data. Okay, I agree. Okay, welcome to Gemini. Gives me a final screen here. Opt in to receive. No, not right now. Okay, so here we are. And uh, that's the that's the Gemini home screen. You see, there's this place at the bottom for a prompt. So uh, help me create a a prompt for Gemini. Let's combine some different things that we're looking for. Does somebody have a suggestion of something that we should ask about or create? I'm just gonna start typing. Share about the largest school districts in Los Angeles County. So basic facts like what cities they are in, um, how many students and teachers, and um, how many schools. Use citations whenever possible. I want to keep Gemini honest here. Okay, I'm just going to see what see what we get. <laughs> All right, LA Unified, we all, we all know that that's true. We got Long Beach, yes. Long Beach City, Glendale, and then other large districts. Nice. And there's always a little disclaimer that they have. I hope this information provides a good starting point. But here's the thing I wanted to show, and that's the integration that you have with Gemini that you don't have with GPT, ChatGPT, and that's to uh, share it to Docs. So on this account, it's not turned on. But if you have that turned on, when you click on Share, it'll say Copy to Docs, and you can copy that right over to Docs. If you don't have that, you can just select it. I'm just going to copy it and then go Docs New. Uh, have you used that integration chip? Uh, no, I haven't used the share integration. I okay. operate a lot on Microsoft. Oh, you're doing it mostly on Microsoft. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's I tend see. towards ChatGPT or GPT. Yeah. yeah. You tend towards ChatGPT. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see. I'll do it with my other account here. Just a second as we finish up. Let's see. There we go. So this is my Lego account, bar.google.com, Gemini. It just magically changes to Gemini. I'm gonna put the same prompt. There we go. And it's gonna do its magic. Okay, yeah, so I do see some, some links. I could inspect those, niche.com must just be like school data. Oh, look at that. It messed up on that URL. And this one too. Gemini said, ah, I'm just going to provide a placeholder. Okay, so here I click share and export and there it is. Share to docs or to email. So I click to docs and it's just saving me the work of copy and pasting. But I've done it with some pretty long uh, drafts and it's it's really nice to be able to have that option there you go i think eventually they'll probably have a spreadsheet option where you can copy over to a spreadsheet maybe in a presentation i don't know about the formats there the way you turn that on is in settings i think it's right over here no 
Another way you can share it though, is even if you have just a regular account and it's not integrated, you can click on share and you can just give that link. And then somebody can just, oh, no, I didn't copy the link properly. Copy link. There it is. So that's the link direct. Where did it go? There it is. That's the, it's just g.co slash Gemini. That's kind of a long link, but that's a way to cite the, the page too. If you wanted to put it in a document here, then you could put the link resource. This is citation. Citation. Original, original scheme, original outline from Gemini. And you could just, you know, do whatever kind of citation you wanted to there. So I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some standards developing, right? Okay, well, that's great. I wanted to just, as we finish today, uh, say thank you again for joining today. I know this time has gone by so fast. You might have already seen on the resource document, there's all those step-by-steps that I was talking about. I show how to use BAR to do some data analysis, real basic stuff. Uh, there's how to turn those extensions on. And then uh, I, the one I didn't really cover is voice typing, but if you haven't tried voice typing, it's been around for a good 10 years, I think, and it's, it's excellent. And it's in docs. So you just go to tools, voice typing, and you just click. And you say allow. And this is the beginning of everything I wanted to say. And you probably feel like I will never end because I love talking into voice typing. It is so awesome. Bold. Italics. So you can use it for some commands too. Okay, turn it off. So that's voice typing. Um, well, there's the stuff on Google Lens. I have a few of those. And then I found a lot of these different AI tools. These are classic ones mostly that um, you'll see. You can see that the Google has a real depth of uh, published research and these little projects that um they've been experimenting with and they make them available for people to try things out to try things out and that's what i encourage you to do uh just you know try some ai tools um music lm is now called music fx and that's my favorite tool is it's it's free and you can create music with that that's a google tool there we go I'm already logged in. All right, let me see, let me let me create a song. Um, a energetic playoff song rock and indie deal. Let's see how this goes. Well, uh, any comments uh, today? Some here's some something that you want to try. Anybody going to try one of those duet account? Whoa, that music came on. Was that audible to you? Could you hear that? No, we didn't hear it. Okay. It sounds a little corny, but I'm just going to create the link and share the link. So they made this very uh, powerful music creator. You can't make you can't make a whole entire song, but you can describe your song and then, you know. Oh, Don, you need the link for the resources? Oh, sure. I'll put that in there for you. Yeah, let me do that. Resources. There's the resource talk. Yeah, thanks for coming, Don. I appreciate it. Long time no see. Go. Oh, no, thank you. When you create a song, can you also create a singer? Uh, the Bard, I mean, the, excuse me, the, the Google one doesn't do voice. Uh, I've heard some that kind of have a voice in the background, but uh, Copilot just came out with Music Generator in Suno. 
uh, it's called Suno and it's in it's part of Copilot. So if you ask it to create a song, it'll create the lyrics, it'll create the background music and a singer. That is jaw dropping amazing. So yes, that's possible. It's just, you know, I guess one of the reasons they stay away from voice is copyright, you know, intellectual property. Voices are so distinctive, you know. Okay, so there's the link to the resources. It's the last link there. You all are just so patient. Thank you for putting up with my ramblings. Um, going to have a um, AI with Google in the classroom. I'll focus on some of the more specific the classroom tools that will be coming up. And um, I currently have Google Workspace courses that are on um, Canvas. So if anybody's interested, if you are a LACO employee, uh, those are totally free. So I'm just putting the link for evaluation, if you would be so kind. Leave a comment. There it is. So you just go there, select AI with Google, and the session is today. But yeah, the, the course, uh, if you're interested, you can register, uh, let's say, workshops. Put the link to the Google course. I have two courses that just opened. One is level one and the other is level two. And they're designed to help you uh, prepare for the level one or level two exam for Google for Education. But they would be helpful for anybody, even if you're not in the classroom. Let's see, yeah, with Google. There it is, not the one I want. Workspace, there it is. Okay. I also have a, a workshop called Google Workspace Essentials. I don't see that on the calendar. Oh, it looks like the Google a course is not uh, on the list. But if you're interested, just let me know, and I'll I'll register you. All right, that's fantastic. I'll be I'll be hanging out if you have any more questions. I'd be happy to answer them or suggestions. Who is here with the phone? Three two three number. I was wondering if that was because you wasn't able to log you in. No, it's or... because for some reason on this, I just came out of a Teams meeting, but I can't hear any oh. uh, any. Okay. I can't. You can't hear me at all on on the Google, so I had to come in on the phone. The same oh, time. that's what you did. I got you. That makes sense. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you know uh, the the settings for the audio. Are picked up differently by the different apps, and you know, like I've noticed, I've noticed that it's a Zoom always has a conflict with my audio setting. I always have to double check my microphone, and then I'll change the setting, and then I'll, you know, in the system, and then I'll go back and I'm like, wait, is it the is it Windows or is it Zoom? Which one is it? You know, <laughs> trying to get it to all work right. So, yeah. But uh, did anybody, uh, this, a lot of you, this is your first time with Google Meet. Anybody have comments about that? Maybe it's a little bit nostalgic. You know, it's improved since it first came out. I like how simple it, it seems to be more, more simplified, you know, the way that everything looks on the screen. Not as much, um, not as many drop downs and things as you find in Teams. I'll put the recording in a, a link to the recording in the in the in an email to everybody. Actually, I have a question: Is when yeah, you did up? the when you created the the graphic, yeah. the cartoon to go along with the book, is it looking that you said right at a fourth grade level, and is it creating a graphic that would be at the fourth grade level? And if you told it create me a graphic at college level, would it create a, a different graphic? uh it's it's well that's great it's a great question it's not looking at the duet in docs is not talking to the duet in slides 
It's only how using did it pick up the how did it pick up the dog and the horse, which is in another duet? Well, it's because I think in the prompt I gave it, it had the character that barked and the character that oinked. And it, even though it didn't Great say thing. dog and cat, I think that, and that's what I thought was pretty amazing about that was, I was I was really surprised. I mean, usually when I've done help me draw or help me visualize, they call they call it, I have to do you know three or four prompts to get a picture or an image that I can use. And unlike Mid Journey or Adobe Firefly with uh, Help Me Visualize, you know, in slides, I've never found an image that was just like, OMG, that is so incredible. How, how come I didn't think of that, you know? But it is uh, for something like this, that you're just on the fly, you have, a, you have a unique story and you want to create an image that has a couple random characters, that is really efficient. It's a lot better than searching the web for a picture that just might work, you know? Or, you know, the setting or this, that, or the other thing. The other thing you, you'll find with the, du with the uh, duet, you know, help me visualize, at least right now, it's just square images. So you can, um, you can obviously, you can just crop an image and make it a rectangle. I don't usually just use square images in my slides. You know what I mean? Can you refine the search? If you get an image, say, can you make this a circular image and then? No, you can't. It? You can't, but you can use the cropping tool. So that's what I would normally do. So let me go there, show you what I mean. Let's see. While you're doing that, last question: Are the images yeah. are the images public domain? Yeah, yeah. They're they're basically assumed under the license for uh, the product, and so you have permission to use them. Uh, is that what you're asking in terms of property rights? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If we were going to publish a, a manual or a handbook or something, mm -hmm. can we use those those images? Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. As far as I as far as I know. Uh, okay. So let's see if it's still on. Cause yeah, it's still there. Okay. So let's create an image here. Uh, so anyway, my summary of this tool is at least right now as it's coming out, it's just it's quick and dirty. It's it's not really pro level tool, but uh, let's see. Uh, students in outside of school in downtown Los Angeles. Sunny day, some clouds. Now, you know, these, these uh, image generators notoriously don't do people very well either. Sometimes they'll just tell you, sorry. Okay, so let's just take this one. Yeah, the people are at a far distance, but I just keep it highlighted like that, and then I click on the cropping tool. Let's say I wanted to just bring it down, but if I wanted to do something else, I click on the cropping tool and do some shapes. So in terms of efficiency, that I prefer way over PowerPoint and the editing. Now there are a lot of different options in PowerPoint, but I mean, it's less than a minute from when I started out prompting and I have an image that I can use. And did you say you cannot refine the prompts to, to refine the images down below? You can't ask another question? Uh, there's not a repeat back back and forth but what you can do is just you'll back up to the prompt and then add cars uh add 1980s vehicles like a ford pinto <laughs> i don't know why i'm thinking about a ford pinto and this gives me this little animation okay there we go Okay, so now I have this to work with. I like that even better. You know, it's got some clouds and yeah. 
So now, in terms of licensing information, there might be some embedded in the image. We'd have to inspect it, like with an image editor. Um, it doesn't have a watermark, but I'm sure if you went into the terms of service, you could find some details on that. There are there's this little pop up thing, and you can you can use like a you know suggestions for the prompts. You like the look of something, you can you can use some of that language. Another thing you could do is in uh, so let's say you're in Bard. 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 Well, let's just let's try. It. Well, I'll just tell you. You know, Don, you could use what what I do sometimes is in ChatGPT or in Bard Gemini, I'll start to create a prompt that then I can use in an image generator. But with ChatGPT four, Dolly's built in, so then you can do some back and forth. Of course. You can say that's great. Can you add add some trees with leaves? Would you add a sequoia tree in the background, please? Whatever. So, yeah, I I don't know. I I don't think for me I'm a little conflicted because you know if I was having to make a decision about purchasing uh, licenses for Duet. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see the I don't see the motivation to go all in and, and get licenses with a product that's still kind of being built out. You know, that it's really it's really not that amazing. I mean, yeah, it's pretty cool what you can do, but it's it's not like pro level amazing. Maybe that's just because I haven't haven't used it enough, but anybody else can you think of any other examples? Things we could try. Uh, let's try. Let's try another one with uh, sheets. So let's go to file new spreadsheet. Okay. So uh, who's who's good with uh, with spreadsheets? Give me a prompt. Let's see. Let's put let's put sheets to the test here. Nobody. Did everybody go to sleep? A list of most wealthy people in the world by country. Ooh. The hundred most wealthy people. Sure. And you also add yes go ahead country and net worth yes include their country net worth and, and uh, they have kids source of their wealth okay well chip that's getting a little bit personal i don't know about that <laughs> Okay, that's enough. We're just testing it. I feel the power. Da, da, da. But you know, it's good to do a little checking and seeing, uh, you know, do some research when you're using these tools and see if it's accurate. Ah, we put it to the test and it says we can't help with that. Let's let's limit this to 10 most wealthy people and see if that helps. So help me organize says, sorry, you can't do that. Soon, help me organize. Oh, look at that. Musk, Arnold, Bezos, Gates, Buffett, and Bonnie, Page. Oh, Larry Page is still on the list. Bridge, Sergey Brand, there they are. Zuckerberg. Wow, why is Warren Buffett on there twice? That's weird. You see that? So we found. Uh, we found a hallucination or something. I don't know what you call that, but that's is it is it come on, is it one one eighteen or is it one fifty one? Or is it both because he gave half of his money to charity? Yeah, and is it the right. Warren Buffett Foundation? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. 
Yeah, that's what it is. So one of these is the Warren Buffett Foundation. Okay, well. It's funny because I used Gemini to do the same thing. Yes. And it's a different list. Mm. Interesting. So I have Michael Bloomberg on here. I have Steve Ballmer from Microsoft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I must be using different sources. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, you know, that's probably a, a good little micro experience that we able to do a quick prompt at first you're like wow that's pretty amazing and then you just start to look at it and you go wait a minute that's so something Warren I Buffett is on hmm? so chat GPT said he's on there twice because his found he owns Berkshire Hathaway which has its own value and then Berkshire Hathaway owns a whole bunch of other companies that have a another value so it lists, it separates his two values out, the company he owns, and then all the, basically the stock Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway owns. Okay. Now I'm gonna go to dinner with Musk and Buffett. See what, see where we go. <laughs> all right, y'all, I better, I better run along. Thanks for taking some time today. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right now, see you later.